Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast Road Edition. Greetings from Bend, Oregon. Natasha, how are you? Good. This is a cool city. Um, I'm glad that we're finally at a hotel. Yeah. Because Moshe's uh, camping style is a little relentless in terms of ticking the boxes on any sort of monument or whatever any guidebook says to see, Moshe needs to see it all. Yeah, and Natasha... Whereas I'm a normal person and I don't need to see it all. You check into a national park, they show you every single thing in like a beautiful picture. Why do we need to like what? go see it all? Oh, that's true. Why don't we just Google it? We should just Google national parks and Natasha, you can stay at like a, a, a resort where they do free pedicures. That's more Natasha's camping style. But you know, the truth is between Natasha's, we were supposed to be camping tonight, by the way. I just want you to know that we're here because of you, honeymooners. We were supposed to be camping tonight, but our toxic producer, Laura's Gestapo style scheduling, coupled with Natasha's absolute disdain for anything in the natural world, caused us to check into a beautiful hotel and create this beautiful podcast for you right now. And Natasha, you have a platform in which to air your grievances where I want to see the world and you would prefer to put your feet up and read a book. It's just, it's a classic no. yin yang. I'm one way, you're another. You're like Clark Griswold from Vacation. Like a great dad. Making your family do all of these stops that they, it, like yesterday we saw a waterfall. Yep. Then we went and hiked around a lake. Yep. And then. We went on a canoe ride. Yep. And then you still wanted to go to a hot springs. Now, what sounds more fun to you, fair listener? A canoe ride, a lake walk, a waterfall hike, and a hot spring? Or just checking in, finding where the best velvet pancakes are in a city, and then checking into a hotel? I think it's pretty obvious that I'm awesome, and Natasha, you're not made for camping. Listen, I'm enjoying seeing the nature sites, but... I just don't have FOMO if I didn't like tick off every single monument. You wouldn't have FOMO if we had stayed in Los Angeles. That's true. So in a way, you're lucky to have me in your life. And our daughter is enriched. She's currently on her iPad. Probably, I assume, Googling facts about the Umpqua National Forest right now. I'd also like to do a shout out to this hotel because this whole chain of hotels is kind of magical. It's called Holiday Inn. So if you're driving up and down the Pacific Northwest, I would highly suggest staying at one of... McMinimums is what it's called. McMinimum, very bad name. But they, they turn old schools, they upcycle. Would that be correct? I don't know, honey. I'm too busy thinking about rainforests and rivers to be thinking about upcycling old schools. <laughs> it's cool, though. Yeah, it's basically the design scheme here is like, um, it's like, uh, it's like elven architecture, elven chic. What, how did I put it last night? I don't know. Honey. It's like an elf got an uh, interior decorating firm and the Lord of the Rings is the theme, but it is quite a place. And Natasha, you have been a real trooper. There have only been, I would say, four or five bouts of uh, com ultimate complaining. And mostly, we've just been taking in the forest bathing. We stayed at the Jackson Wellsprings Hot Spring Resort. We walked through a menstruation tent. I was kicked out. I was not welcome in the blood tent. I asked the woman, I was like, what, is, what do people usually do in this tent? And she was like, bleed. And we didn't know what she meant. And then we thought about it and we realized, oh, that kind of blood. But here's the I good did have to explain to my child what she was talking about. Here's the good news. Uh, I was not welcome in the moon tent, but there is a men's circle for when the women are going through their uh, heavy flow rituals where the men uh, bang on drums and start a fire in support of the woman's uh, cycle um, in the red tent. And it's kind of beautiful. So I have volunteered. I am pretty excited. If anybody wants to meet me in Ashland, Oregon for a uh, support of women's menses gathering, uh, I'm doing a bit of a, of, of a men's retreat as well. Also, remember we asked the guy what that other hut was for and the only, uh, the only example he had. Oh, he's like, this is a very powerful place. We do a lot of very powerful rituals here. And the kids there too. And all he could think of was, ah, I buried an abortion here once. And we thought, 
Well, all right. If that's the only example that comes to mind, this is a very intense tent. Yeah, I'm getting really good at just uh, when my child asks what someone's talking about, I'm just like, oh, I think there's an ice cream store. Oh, you lie. <laughs> Last night we were watching a I'm movie. I'm not ready to tell her what an abortion is. Last night we were, you were not ready to tell her what anything is. Last night we were watching a movie. It was a, a kid's movie. And the two characters said, uh, "More, I'm retired now. More time for Hanky Panky. And our kid said, what's Hanky Panky? And Natasha said, being silly. And it explains a lot. What would you say? It explains a lot about your lovemaking style, Natasha, because it's extremely silly. It's, a, it's the, some of the silliest sex I've ever had in my life. A lot of clown noses, a lot of slide whistles. And I finally understand. What would I say? I'd say being romantic. What do you think? Okay, then what's being romantic? It's when a man and a woman only, exclusively a man and a woman, that is the way, that is the, the correct way, I would say. I would start to go into my sort of biblical literalism, kind of fundamentalist stuff. I'd say it's when a man or a woman, or a woman and a woman, or a man and a man, or a non, two non-binary people, or any other iteration of gender expression, this is all that I, what I would say to her, find each other attractive and hot, and start to French, then move into fingering, then some light anal foreplay, and then full penetration, busting raw dog. That's what I would say. That's, I think, an appropriate message for a child. That was disturbing. Which part was disturbing? But seriously, every question, it's better to pivot at this age because every no. question leads to another question. No, they're, they're, they're sponges. Okay, then she's like, okay, what about me and... Uh, Sienna, are we romantic? Well, what I think you're a little young for romance, but when you get older, you'll probably feel those kinds of feelings. For what? girls or for boys? You'll find out. Who knows? I mean, what's your style? Is mom, what's hanky panky? I don't know. Do you like ice cream? Let's move to another area. Listen. Yes, Natasha. We all have our own styles. Yes, mine is educational. Yours is diversional. Thank you. And speaking of diversions, we would like to divert your attention to the first written in question of the day. Because of the spotty Wi Fi here at the McMinimans, we didn't trust having callers. So, shall I read our first advice question? Do it, hon. Okay, here we go. Here is a question from No Name Hi, Natasha and Moshe. I am writing fresh off visiting my husband's family in his hometown. They are very family oriented. When we visit them, we stay with his parents and his younger sister always seems to drop everything to be around the entire weekend. My husband and I have been together for 11 years. We're in our thirties and so is my sister-in-law. I'm writing about an issue that has been there since day one. In some ways it has gotten better, but mostly, I have just figured out ways to cope with their family dynamics and ask for what I need to have an enjoyable time on these trips. I love my sister-in-law, care for her very much, and enjoy her company most of the time. However, she is quite overbearing and sensitive, and her behavior towards my husband is incredibly cringy, i.e. hugs him too long, does anything for him without, asking, without him asking, and much more. Mm. Last week, she literally said to me, I should sunscreen my brother's body like this she, <laughs> after she put too much sunscreen on her own leg it's like their relationship is stuck in a little kid brother sister dynamic but we're full grown adults i think it's important to note that she's single and has never brought a significant other home in the 11 wow. years i've been around the family i thought it would stop or lessen when we got married three years ago but it hasn't I've talked to my husband about it after pretty much every visit, and he's done a good job of growing out of this dynamic, but she will not let go, metaphorically and literally. Because she is so sensitive, direct communication does not seem to be a productive solution. I replay and dwell on these strange moments for weeks after spending time with his sister. My friends have witnessed some of these moments and I talk it out with them. No one seems to know the best way to handle it compassionately. I wish I could say, grow up and find a goddamn boyfriend but that would be a death sentence to our relationship. You have any advice on how to either stop these cringy moments or how to disassociate further when I observe them? Thank you, no name. You know me, I like to disassociate. Oh, right, Natasha, right when your sister-in-law tries to French kiss your husband, Natasha would be like, do you like 
huckleberry ice cream? No, but one thing I would do is when she tells me how to sunscreen him, I would pretend like I didn't hear her and walk away. Oh, that's so aggressive. You would just ice her fully and no, walk away? No, not ice her. Just be like, you would just pretend like you didn't get what she said. I... I'm not saying this is the right thing to do, but I would just be like, have you seen the other sunscreen? Oh, I'll be right back. I think... This is really hard, though. But no, Natasha's style does is good for this, actually, which is she will like do a thing where she more or less ignores a thing that bothers her and just move on with what she wants. And that might be good advice. Actually. Misdirection. Mm -hmm. Like she's like she's, she's like, you should put sunscreen on him like this. Ha -ha, have you seen that book I was looking for? Where's my charger? You just like totally pivot, never indulge her in any of her cracked out you know questions because this woman it sounds like your husband doesn't really have the problem she kind of has the problem actually i disagree see a lot of this maybe is, he needs to talk to her a lot of the interesting uh that you know me i i'm a classic um analyst of the female labor you you know that's sort of my passion in life is making sure that female uh labor is not uh unduly put on the woman and What's interesting here is that the onus is all on you, but the actual person that needs to make the boundary is not you, it's your freaking husband. Your husband has a sister that treats him inappropriately, and you're like, how do I deal with this situation? But it seems like your husband should be the one. You're like, I don't know if I could say back off my husband. Well, can't your husband say, hey, sis, stop trying to finger me? I mean, you know, it just seems like it's on him. I know, but part of their dynamic, like she, you know, it's not like she's just some stray person that's like attached to him. Their whole family is super close. Right. So hopefully, you know, one one thing I will say is Moshe's family is kind of annoyingly Whoa, close. whoa, whoa, whoa. Just because you guys are like half estranged, don't put this no, on No, no, no. I'm just saying his family is a little annoyingly close. However, I am reaping some of the rewards of that. You like know, what? Like my daughter wakes up every morning and tells me, I love you. That, I like that that's annoyingly close to you. Well, because your mom is constantly saying it. So that must mean like she, you were constant. I don't know. Somehow it has like, it has rubbed off. And, you know, I like that my child, the second she wakes up, you know, opens her eyes and is like very loving, you know, and very outwardly so like that's not something i taught her but i'm reaping the benefits of how close your family is i think that came from your side of the family so i'm just saying there are some positives and when you have your own family maybe you should have a kid that's the secret have a kid so that your sister-in-law can flirt with that kid as well well listen it, it, here's the thing it's not going to change she has this she has this fixation on your on your husband well i think okay so i understand your dilemma here you can't say directly, hey, back off my husband a little bit, because if you did that, it would be a death knell for your relationship with her, and it would just create a permanent iceberg in this entire family relationship. You also can't abide by the uh, behavior because it drives you insane. And this is a really difficult situation. I think my opinion is that the secret may lie in uh, what we call uh, mockery. Like rather than a direct assault, maybe a little sly comment. That's kind of what I'm saying. Well, you were saying change the subject entirely or pretend you didn't hear, which I think actually might be good, which I think I'm not saying you're- Whenever she crosses a line. You like, just think no one should be telling you how to put sunscreen. You know, if, if she was someone was telling me how to put sunscreen on my kid, I'd be annoyed, right, much but... less my husband and also, let your husband put his own damn sunscreen on. Well, there's that too. I mean, look. This guy sounds kind of hot. Oh, you think he's like a hunk? Yeah. So so hot, in fact, that uh, his sister can't resist uh, tiptoeing across the uh, incest taboo. Now- She has a little bit of a fantasy for him. That, what I'm saying with, with humor is not making fun of the sister, but little passive aggressive jokes that might help you along the way. So if you told, if I, if, if my brother, told you how to put sunscreen on me, you might say something like, oh yeah, well, we like it. We like to kind of make our own rules around sunscreen in our family. Or mm -hmm. like, instead of the direct assault of like, hey, don't tell me how to put sunscreen on my husband. Yeah. It's just a little joke. Oh, well, you know, because we, I mean, make her uncomfortable. 
oh, well, this actually turns him on. So I do it this way to turn it like just some Not way everyone's personality can absorb saying something like this that. is true. But what I'm saying is you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The primary advice I've got for this person is just accept ex what you said, accept that this woman's inappropriate, understand that you do not live with them. You just visited their family in his hometown. This means you are not face to face with this behavior every day of your life. And also, how many times a year can you handle this? Is it as much as that other caller eats Bojangles chicken bones? Right. Is it four times? A think of I it think as a Bojangles quarterly. chicken bone. Yeah. Quarterly. Can you, can you do this quarterly? And also, is there a hotel in the hometown? Maybe you could stay at his family two days and stay at the hotel another day. So you guys can like, you can remind your husband, you know, who really has the pussy in this family? And you well, can to be fair, him really good in to, a hotel room. To be fair to the sister-in-law, she probably also has the pussy in this family. She's never. She, the sister-in-law is never going to not drop everything to be around your hunky husband. The whole family dynamic is that he was kind of the leader. It sounds like, and when he comes back, you know, everyone's kind of. But it's it's just it's not that much, right? Yeah, I think part, you have to have a multi-prong attack here. Since you're since the most obvious attack, which is, hey, can you just back off of my husband a little bit will not work. That's not we put work. that to the side and we do a multi prong attack. Part of it is ignoring the things she says and moving to a new topic. I would say demonstratively, when she says the, the sunscreen thing, you just look at her for a half a second like you didn't understand what she said and move to a new topic. Oh, so but, you agree with my I do. diversion. I do agree. But then once in a while, I would say making a little a little jokey comment, I think really would work something like, oh, yeah, we're, we we like the way we put on sunscreen in this family. So we're going to do it that way. Third prong is accepting and for, just accepting that this is the way this woman is and knowing that you're going to be a little uncomfortable. Fourth prong is if you're staying at their house, stop. I agree with that. Or advice. half. And fifth prong is telling your husband that he needs to say something putting some of the onus of the work onto him because it makes you uncomfortable and his responsibility is to you, not to his sister. Yeah, and I also think like, you could also ask her when you guys are sitting around about her love life. Yeah, oh, that'd be kind of fun. Every time she does something inappropriate, say, hey, are you dating anybody? That would be funny. Hey, you should put sunscreen on this way. Oh, are you dating anybody these days? Like just a direct uh, change of subject to her love life. Yeah, I think I think you have to do a multi prong. That's what I think. But most importantly, I think you have to steal yourself mentally, go through these different things that you're going to do when you get there, because you know what's going to happen. And what happens when you get triggered is you forget all of the things you decided to do. So go in there with a plan of attack. And also, before you talk to your husband, it's important to have some real um, uh, what are they called? Examples of her odd behavior. So, you know, if you are, if you do feel like after the next visit, you need to talk to him, you should have the three things that she said so he can like observe it because he's so used to her. If you're like, it's just her vibe, you know, but instead you're like, she told me I should put sunscreen on you like this, like anything you would tell a friend that they would be like, oh, that's weird. Just because that'll help him frame it in his mind correctly. But uh, I don't know. It's just kind of like, hopefully one day you'll, she'll be a good aunt or something. Well, I think also another thing is, is just sort of like, like knowing that this woman isn't going to change and understanding that her weird behavior isn't actually your problem. This line keeps sticking out to me. I replay and dwell on these strange moments for weeks after spending time with his sister. That's the part where I think this is your problem right is is that you keep thinking that this actually has something to do with you and your family and isn't just her problem like this behavior isn't really your business even though it crosses a line of inappropriate you think that this this is haunting you but in reality if someone told you about this behavior like if i told you about this behavior and it was in my family and it was uh, natasha's brother that was doing this you would go, what a weirdo. You wouldn't say you, that you should be dwelling on this. The dwelling part is the part where you can say, wow, what a, 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 a sick soul this is, and I hope she gets better. It has nothing to do with me, and her behavior isn't really my business. And if your husband loves her as much as she loves him, 
he should know that until she stops fixating on him, she's probably not going to find a partner. And it probably is a little unhealthy what she's doing. Um, I, you know, she's obsessed with him. I just had a thought. You might, you know, so, you know what aversion therapy is, Natasha? Mm -hmm. Like where if you're a, a, afraid of spiders, you like cover yourself in spiders. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should push the, if none of this works, maybe you should push this all the way to the end and just get a hotel room in town one night and tell your husband to meet you there and then um, say you're going to have a romantic night. Moshe. And then, let me finish. This is a really good idea. And then tell the sister to meet you there because you have something to say to her. And then you go out of town to go like get a pedicure or something with Natasha. And then you just let them like consummate. Finally, like let their love become a reality. And I feel like if they have one passionate night of love making, that if they'll both get it out of their system. Listen, changing topics, laughing, brushing things off is underrated. Absolutely. Especially in a situation where there's no good solution. I find humor and like eye rolls and little jokes and ignoring things to be the only solution sometimes when the uh, when the obvious communication solution is not an option. As the nun on our wall in our hotel room has written on the chalkboard, if you can't laugh, you're dead. All right, good luck out there. Natasha, I think that was amazing. I think we helped that person a lot. How about another write-in question? Okay. Hey, Moshe and Natasha, longtime fan since another period, first time writing in. I'm an artist and I make a lot of my income from doing art fairs. At these art fairs, I met another vendor, Deborah, who makes jewelry. She's really been coming on to me every time I see her. She wants me to come to her house. I do think she's a certified MILF. Okay, a certified MILF. <laughs> let me just say those like are- Like you think she has children? No, she thinks she has a license. And by the way, let me just say, a certified MILF, they're rare. It takes a lot of volunteer hours and flight hours to get to the certification process. And if she is a certified MILF, I would say grab it while you can. Okay, wait, here's some stats. All right, so this person is giving us Stats about Deborah. Stats about Deborah. Recently was an alcoholic, not in a program. Confusing sentence. Definitely. Recently was an alcoholic. <laughs> what have you been up to lately, Deborah? <laughs> well, recently I was an alcoholic. Uh, that was kind of what I did my summer vacation. Okay. Served her husband divorce papers in 2021. Very fresh and serving sounds dramatic. Um, has no money, even less than me. Now this I have a hard time believing. You're telling me that a certified MILF who makes jewelry at an art fair <laughs> is not rolling in the dough? She's 45 years old. <laughs> has two kids half my age, and that doesn't bother me. Well, this will. Lives with her husband, <laughs> who she served divorce papers to. Who is jealous, controlling, and has anger issues. This person already knows the answer. She's all right. There's an, more stats about Deborah. She says she has only ever come out to me as a bisexual, not to anyone else. She's emotionally unstable. And finally, she gives me presents. I'm a 25 year old lesbian. I try to go out with women my own age. I know this is bad for me. I assume she means going for the certified milk. Yeah. I could easily see this ending in her husband killing me. <laughs> so I will not go to her house. Whoa. It's impossible to completely avoid her at art fairs. I've decided to keep her at arm's length despite her constant invitations. But every time I see her in public, we end up talking for an hour. How should I handle this? How do I stay out of trouble here? Thanks. Horny but scared. P.S. Deborah, not her real name. Just in case. Just in case what? Just in case her emotionally unstable husband murders you? Here's, here's my problem with this, too, because my uh, initial instinct is, can you guys, like, fuck in a bathroom? But then I'm like, you then know what? Then you're thinking it's an art fair, it'll be a porta potty That, too, yes. And the other issue, even if it was like, can you fuck in a hotel room? She has never come out as a bisexual except to you. So this is something that she is going to tell people and tell oh, her yeah. husband. Smart. So you're not going to be able to just have. So I think you're just stuck between a porta potty and in a hard place in a hard place yeah because i i just i i don't see this 
not being dramatic. So well, this is you're so right, Natasha, that this is one of those classic situations where you already know the answer and you also already know that you're going to not heed the advice of your thinking mind. This woman is going to fuck the certified MILF, but she also knows that it's the absolute last thing in the world that she should do. When you get to this level of horny, because there's something about situations like this that are more erotic than anything else. Danger, and I don't know what it is about being a human being, a horny human being, but danger makes it hotter. And that is so bad. Like, it's, if this was just a regular certified MILF who's hot, bisexual, coming on to you, but emotionally stable and didn't have a murderous husband at home sharpening a machete ready to take down any woman that comes towards his ex-wife, you wouldn't be as hot for her. And that is fucked up, but yeah. it's true. And there's way too many red flags. Like, oh, there's, it could, it's a fucking... Recent alcoholic, uh, has no money, has served someone divorce papers, which is dramatic, and now she's still living with him. Here's the thing I think you should do. The reason why you're also attracted to her is because she is 40, in her 40s. These people are more interesting. They sometimes know how to have orgasms better. Maybe you should start looking for a girl, a woman in her 40s, because it, you might be turned on by that. Yes. That's why you guys are talking for hours, because she's not a fucking dumbass 25-year-old. Hey, 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 Natasha, 25-year-olds are really captivating. Some of them, but some of them are really dumb. Yeah, well, I'm sure this 45-year-old woman who's living with her ex, <laughs> abusive ex-husband is really a crackerjack of intellect. But no. maybe they have more, more in common. What I'm saying is, why don't you expand the aperture of your dating to include these MILFs? Because... That might actually scratch the itch and don't get involved with this person. I mean, obviously, don't get involved in this with this person. I mean, this couldn't be more obvious. Do not do it. And since you are going to do it anyway, I just want to warn you. I mean, the truth is you probably will not get murdered by the husband. But any time there is a romantic dalliance that has the possibility of murder, it is time to not engage. That is as clear as I can possibly make it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to do it anyway. Okay. Man, that's a tough one. I know that feeling of being like, this is so bad, and that's why I want it all the more. Just play it through in your head. It's going to make art fairs worse. That's how you make your money. Oh, there's, yeah, there's no good possibility that your professional life and personal life are going to get detonated by this woman. Obviously, Natasha was so right. She's going to tell everybody because she's a fucking mess. She is a mess. And, and she's kind of straight. Well, you got to force the issue with stuff like this. When it feels like an addiction, by the way, that's my real advice. Anytime you're thinking about a sexual or romantic situation and it feels like drugs, it feels like picking up drugs from your dealer. You're like, oh, I got to get there. I want to try it. I, blah, 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 blah. That is when it's time to know that you shouldn't do it. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and the way to do that is to call the drug dealer and say, I'm not, I don't want any drugs. I think the best solution here is for you to say to Deborah at the next art fair, Deborah, I think you're awesome, but the truth is I, I need to stop flirting with you. It's bad for me. Like audibly say it out loud, reject her, even though she hasn't said I'm, I'm ready for you, just reject her. Because the work, the embarrassment of having a conversation where you reject her is so much less dramatic and, and dangerous than the fallout from engaging with this woman any further. And the longer you do this dance with her, this like, oh, I haven't done it yet dance, the more likely it is that something is going to go down. Because the hornier you get, the less you start thinking. Yeah. All right, Tosh. And uh, try to not accept those presents. That's right. Tosh, what do you think? Should we hear some secrets? Yeah, let's hear some. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, on this very podcast, we gave somebody a suggestion to see a couples counselor, and I have got a suggestion for where they can find one. Where's that? Talkspace. I love Talkspace. It is accessible and affordable, which is something, you know, just being able to Zoom with people and they're not charging you some, like, crazy amount of money. Like, my therapist kept raising 
the prices so much that it made it impossible for me to even see him regularly. Do not put off healing your mental health crises. Now is the time. If you're dealing with anxiety, depression, anger issues, anything, Talkspace has got you covered. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. So don't worry, no one's going to know your shit. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. $80? To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. Yes, $80 off your first month, and you can show your support for this show. That's Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. On our way to our camping trip, you were obsessed with getting our child a subscription to the Grim Grimmer Grimmest podcast, so we subscribed. But I didn't know if our child would like it, but I wasn't worried about subscribing because I knew there was rocket money. And just to say, we did like the podcast. We love the podcast, and we'll probably keep the subscription, but you probably have some subscriptions that you signed up for a long time ago and never canceled, and you never used the thing. Well, that's what Rocket Money is for. They will actually alert you that you have to change your spending or subscriptions that save you money. That's right. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. You can try it for free for 30 days. Just enough time that you can see the results. We did it. We love it. I tell people about this all the time. We're saving money thanks to Rocket Money. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Hi, um, I just want to leave a secret. Uh, my husband, I love him to death. He's great. He has like severe ash- allergies. And very often he will just grab the toilet paper from the bathroom to use to blow his nose for his allergies and leave anyone who is using the bathroom high and dry. So I will like be sitting there, I've done my business, I'll turn around, there's no toilet paper, and it, it infuriates me. I'm sympathetic to his needs, but so he still stupidly leaves his towel hanging in the bathroom, and so I just use that to wipe my business, and he has to deal with all my cootie germs. Um for him not leaving the toilet paper for me. Did she say she wipes her ass with his towel? Yes. <laughs> well, she did say her vagina. I think she implied that it was pee. It was pee. What about the other thing? Because pee, you wouldn't see. I don't. I think if she was wiping her shit, her ass. shit all over all over his towel, he would <laughs> smell it and see it. I could see how the pee, he wouldn't see it. I mean, at first I was like, wait, her secret is that her husband is a man. Oh, because you thought she was going to say leaves it all around. Well, yeah, like, no, he just wipes it out there. uh, No pun intended. Their supply of toilet paper because he's constantly blowing his nose. I see. And to be honest, get that boy a hanky, uh, get your own self four rolls of toilet paper. I mean, this is such an easy solution. Just have more in the in the bathroom. Yeah, I would look at how hotels do it. Sometimes they have like, you know, a little basket or you can put it in a certain shelf. You should definitely have a bunch of um, a, a, a bunch stocked. To be honest, I did not know until this call that Australians use toilet paper. I, I figured they use like a kangaroo pelt or like a Foster's beer and just poured it down there. I didn't know. I don't know for sure they're Australian, probably British and like uh, are like offended by that or something, but I just thought it was the right joke to make at the time. Now, this solution is simple. Get yourself some extra toilet paper. Stop wiping your piss onto your husband's face towel. Yeah, this is, this is, it's kind of rude, but you know what? I feel like he might think it's hot. This is what you call asymmetrical warfare. He's got allergies, so you're like, well, wipe your face with my piss, bitch. It just seems like... <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> These don't seem commensurate. The punishment does not fit the crime. All right. Let's hear another secret. Hey, Tosh. Hey, Mosh. Uh, huge fan. Long-time listener, multiple-time caller. Um, but I have a secret this time. Um, it's not too crazy, but I am secretly a terrible, terrible tipper whenever no one's looking. Um, <laughs> whenever go I go out with other people, of course, I tip what's, you know, supposed to be tipped a good amount, 20%, <laughs> good and everything. But when no one is looking or I'm out eating by myself or any of that sort, I um, am a terrible tipper. I don't like tipping, especially if all you did was bring me a sandwich and a beer. And that's all you did, and then you never came back to my table. So that is my secret. What is the bad amount? Is it 10%? I is know. it 15%? Is it 25 cents? Also, never leave a secret and open the door to your car at the same time, okay? <laughs> It's just a pattern of of ill mannered behavior that you are proving. You tip five percent, and you have a door chime on your car while you're leaving a secret. I mean, it, it doesn't always make sense in your mind why you're having to leave this money, but you should stop doing that. Well, if you can afford it, even if you can't, if you can afford to be eating, that it's that stuff is nominal. Whether you leave three dollars or fifty cents. It, that's not going to change anyone's in that's not I, I i listen when i was living paycheck to paycheck i never believed that the two dollars here and there were going to like make any significant difference no it's more like he's line. fighting a moral battle but only when no one's looking <laughs> <laughs> but it is annoying like how about when you go to those places like you know those places where you pick up a you pick up one of the um, the numbers, uh -huh. so they make you wait in line. Then sometimes they have other things for sale, like I'll buy, you know, a pound of coffee and a bottle of wine and a little present and my whole breakfast. And so the total comes to like a hundred and five dollars, and then they want me to leave a tip. And do I leave twenty percent, even though I just half bought some groceries? And they're going to give me a little number to put on my thing. So sometimes. I'm trying to figure that out. And I'm like, well, the food portion was this, so I should give 20%. Sometimes I just panic and give 20%, even though mm. why am I paying, why am I giving 20% on groceries? You just have to kind of, and then there's another place I go to that lets you add either 2% or 5% because they're actually adding 18% tip to your meal. Oh. So I, I don't know. I just think like, just uh, just give them what they want. Well, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but since we're uh, going through tipping grievances, by the way, this reminds me of every conversation I've ever had in my synagogue. But if we're going, just kidding, folks. I don't know why you make those jokes, because you did tell me when we first dated that you only had to tip 15% at lunch. 15% at lunch, 20% at dinner. Now, Absolutely I've, not. I've stopped doing that, but I still think it's reasonable. That is but here's my real grievance. If you're a restaurant... And you add tip to the bill, which, by the way, I want every restaurant to add 20% tip to the bill automatically. I don't want to do math while I'm paying you. But if you do that, it should be a federal law that you have to come to the table and say, here's your bill. Tip has already been included. Because I, I have multiple times ended up accidentally tipping 40% because I don't realize that they've already added. Oh, my I God. Know. I know. It's a real issue. All right. One more secret okay i've got a secret i wanted to share because i cannot be the only person with this fantasy obviously but i can't find anybody on google or reddit or set life or hentai or anything but fantasy of mine and after hearing about the belly button crotch connection for you guys which i have and it never occurred to me other people might have it i thought well if anybody knows about this fantasy it's going to be the endless honeymoon audience so uh i think i first discovered masturbating using the pool jets and I used to love that Captain Planet show and I'm like a bit of a hippie anyway so my favorite is when I masturbate I get off the hardest picturing getting railed by like earth elements like the north wind or the ocean if it could become sentient and fuck you and not the north wind in like the form of a man or a creature or just the ocean like all around you touching you all the spots at once and I don't tell, like, my fellow hikers, oh, part of why I love being in nature is because if I go home and let my imagination run wild, I can get off getting picturing, getting railed by this beautiful ass country we saw. Um, 
And these fantasies, by the way, are like beautiful and magical and weird. And no human man is ever going to live up to it, getting swept up and fucked by the north wind. But that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's my dumb secret. Anyway, thanks, guys. And if anybody out there makes hentai or anything, can you make some earth element porn? Because I cannot be the only one. Okay, thanks. Natasha, rarely do our circumstances, our physical circumstances, align with the specificity of someone's absolutely never before heard sexual fantasy in the way that they do today. But lady, have I got a suggestion for you. Watch Elemental. Well, you could watch Elemental, which we watched last night, although I don't recommend getting turned on in a Pixar movie. You gotta go to the Jackson Wellsprings Hot Spring Resort in Ashland, Oregon, and walk your horny ass to the back where the moon tent is, because I guarantee that back there somewhere in that, uh, in that circle of strong menstruating women is someone who can fulfill your fantasy of being fucked by the earth itself. I think that you are in such a deep zone of hippiedom that you should actually come up to the Pacific Northwest and find yourself a pine tree dildo and taste satisfaction for the very first time. I think this sounds, um, I get it. And, and also, it's like the thing we were talking about yesterday with God. Like some people think God is nature, right? Like mm -hmm. what is that called? Anim animism. Oh, animism. Animism. So maybe this is some sort of sexual anime animism anime which is what she was literally requesting people make is anime about being fucked by the north wind i mean this is so specific i think you can't be alone in this I and mean, there's a whole community of hippies that i guarantee somebody else's experiences and i actually think you should go hiking by yourself sometime and actually get off uh, on a tree i think that you will taste satisfaction for the very first time uh natasha and then one day a, a person i mean at some point, she's going to get turned on enough by a person. I'm sure she gets turned on by people. She's just saying her ultimate fantasy. Right. What she thinks about when she closes her eyes is not a person at all, but, but the rivers, the lakes, the moss, the lichens, the tundra itself coming to life in a great phallic lingam and penetrating her in such a way that she feels a volcanic earthquake beneath her quivering vaginals. Also, maybe you were a pagan priestess in your past life. Oh, yeah, and Stonehenge itself was fucking you. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know how I love a thin head of hair, right? Hey, listen, I lost a lot of my bangs when I had my child. But Nutrafol came along and helped everything. Hair changes can happen due to age, biology, and lifestyle. And no matter the root cause of your hair concerns, Nutrafol meets you exactly where you are with science-backed formulas tailored to your needs. Also, Nutrafol's hair growth supplements target the root causes of thinning hair from within. Nutrafol's scalp care formulas help create a healthy environment for improved hair quality. Just like the skin on your face, when your scalp is unbalanced or not cared for regularly with the right products, it can become clogged, dry, and irritated, leading to a poor environment for natural hair growth, which is why they've got shampoos, scalp masks, and scalp essences that are gentle yet effective and work to exfoliate purify and balance the scalp for improved hair health. Nutrafol's physician formulated scalp care products are clinically shown to balance the scalp and visibly improve hair health and strength in just two weeks with their 100% natural fragrance, zero parabens, and ingredients that are color and extension safe. So take the first step towards improved hair health and scalp health now. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our US listeners $10 off your first scalp care order when you go to Nutrafol.com slash scalp and enter promo code honeymoon. That's Nutrafol.com slash scalp promo code honeymoon for $10 off your first scalp care order. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash scalp and enter promo code honeymoon for $10 off your first scalp care order. This is available only to U.S. customers and for a limited time. My bangs are growing back in. All right, Natasha, what do you think? Shall we do another advice? Let's give a little, let's shed a little more advice. All right, here's another write-in question. 
Dear Natasha and Moshe, I am seeking potential follow-up for conversation tips for a semi-complex ongoing issue with my partner of five years. The short version, my partner makes jokes and jabs about my infidelity, and it's really gotten under my skin. Infidelity in quotation marks. For context, I had a former coworker who was very flirtatious and interested in me. I was admittedly uh, rep reciprocative. Okay, I was admittedly reciprocative, but I did let him down gently and we maintained a good working relationship. It's called emotional cheating, by the way. Right. When my partner found out, he called my fidelity into question despite nothing ultimately happening between us. We had a very long discussion about trust and honesty, and I thought we patched everything up. Two years since then, my partner continues to make infidelity jokes. Not cool. If I come home late, I was out seeing that former coworker. If I have any new marks or bruises, that coworker is being too rough in bed with me. You get the picture. I let it slide at first, but as soon as it became constant, I asked if he could stop. And initially he agreed, but that didn't last long. When he started back up again, I made my feelings more clearly known that the jokes aren't funny and that they upset me. He argued that he makes jokes because it allows him to process his insecurities and that he fully trusts me, but I shouldn't take it so personal. I get that and I dropped it, but he continues to make these jokes. Bottom line, the jokes are tired. This has been going on for two years and I'm not sure what else I can say to make him stop. Any suggestions for a follow-up conversation we can have or should I just keep taking it on the chin because it makes him feel better? Sincerely, no. much appreciated. Wait, by the way, it's so funny because this is very well written. Basically, all you, this last paragraph, this is what you say. The jokes are tired. This has been going on for two years. I'm not sure what else I can say to make you stop. Mm, very good. Like you can just say that. Oh, you can even that. keep going. Do you have any suggestions <laughs> for a follow-up conversation we could have? Mom. What's up? I need to change my... Can I watch a different episode? Yeah, and we can leave that in the, the podcast. What did you say? We're going to leave that in the podcast, honey. You're a star now. I mean, this is where I think you might want to call a professional. In. One of the powers of couples counseling, I think, is not only their training and their wisdom, which is very useful sometimes, where they give you a kind of solution to a problem that you didn't see, but also just as important, I think, is just simply having another adult in the room to observe it. Like right now, you guys are in a little sick dynamic where his jealousy, which obvi is obvious, he hasn't gotten over it, even though he says he has. He doesn't fully trust you, even though he says he does. Oh, are those bruises from uh, Hector? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like he's not being honest. And it's time to have another conversation about it where he's able to get his feelings out on the floor. But you can't do that yet because you guys have already decided that you're over it. So it's time to call another adult into the room who can hear it and say to your partner, hey, this is enough, like making it serious because he's allowing this dynamic to say, oh, I'm just joking around. If you don't like it, you're the sinner here. You're the flirter. So if you don't like my little jokes, like how dare you be offended by me joking around about your huge sin in our relationship? That to me is where it's time to call in an adult. And I understand like just saying, go get a couples therapist is involved and it can be expensive. So what I would do is do the thing, like be very stern about it. And you can also, you know, Moshe has said to me, I don't, I know this is very different, but he's like, would you please stop making fun of the Tesla? <laughs> okay. He hates when I make fun of the Tesla. I'm just saying I've made a concerted effort to stop making fun of that stupid ass car. Well, my thing is that yes, when the Tesla flirted with me, I was reciprocative. No, I'm just but saying, I let I let Elon down gently. I would and like I, to roast that car every time I get into it, well, but it I is, don't anymore because you take you take it personally. No, and I actually think that it's funny I'm humiliated that you brought this up, but it is a great example. The reason that I am bothered by it is not that I care about the Tesla. It's not that it bothers me that you don't like it. It's that it becomes annoying and repetitive when every time we get into the car, you say a snide remark about the car. It just becomes tired. And that, I think, can wear down anybody. I'm sure the first few times you thought it was cute, but then eventually the unrelenting nature of the comments became too much to bear. You can also play him this portion of the podcast. Another option, which... I would probably use because I like to manipulate mm -hmm. is I would see if there was something you could barter and make it more fun. Like, honey, 
I promise you, I'll never mention blank. Something that is doable to you, something that they have mentioned is annoying to them, maybe not at the same degree, or like, I'm just saying you could make it a fun thing when you say to him, listen, I can't, I need you to stop doing this. And I, I need you to not make the jokes anymore. How can we make this happen? And if bartering doesn't work, you could try threatening. You say, <laughs> you say, honey, if you keep making the jokes, I am going to go find my ex coworker and fucking rail him. Uh, I'm going to, since you won't trust me, I mean, this isn't real advice. I'm just kidding. I think that, uh, that a combination of what Natasha's saying and what I'm saying is good. And by the way, Speaking of the expense of couples counseling, I believe this could be taken care of in literally one session. All that it requires is a grown up in the room where you say you've been making these jokes for two years. I'm over it. I'm not responsible for you to process your insecurity about something that never even occurred that I've already apologized for. It's like once you forgive me, then it's time to move on. I get it that the trust bucket only fills up a drop at a time, but it takes one kick to empty the whole thing out, out, out and knock it all over. Yes, but we have made an agreement that you forgive me and it, either you do or you don't, but you can't say I forgive you and torture me for the rest of our relationship. And I also think it's important to let them know that this infidelity, which you're, you feel bad about, did make you guys closer. And a lot of times that's these kind of things occur to help us grow and you know you guys fought it and it was tempting i'm sure and you got over it I, and and it made you guys closer and it's important to realize that but it's hard to really make someone closer if they keep bringing it up i have one final thought about this which is you put infidelity in quotation marks and yes it is infidelity in quotation marks this isn't really cheating, but it isn't not cheating. It's somewhere in the middle. As Natasha said, it's emotional cheating. Is it possible, I'm just throwing this out there, that your eye roll about how severe this sin was is part of the dynamic that mm. is making your partner continue to bring it up? Because you, even though you didn't actualize this cheating, you've never taken it as seriously as he took it. And maybe that would help him get over it if you copped in a deeper way to, to how deep the sin was. Even though to you, it was like not as big of a deal, maybe to him it really was. And so uh, allowing him the acknowledgement that you understand how bad this was for him uh, would allow him to, because maybe that's why he keeps bringing it up. Maybe he's like, well, you didn't take it seriously, so I'm going to keep you know making these little jokes so that you know it really hurt me. I know that you know it hurt him, but maybe you don't acknowledge it as deeply as you could that's another thought okay all right we'll just do anything but take it on the chin good yeah and and just think about how you could have taken it on the chin had you actually fucked your co-worker that's a cum joke ladies and gentlemen and i'm very proud of it um well what do you think one more no we gotta go hon all right natasha well we'll see you next time on the endless honeymoon podcast with even more advice and we can't wait until next week we're going to see a lot of our pacific northwest fans in the building at polaris hall we have been stopped on trails in hotel lobbies we i think this might be our sweet spot for fans for honeymooners we love you we'll see you soon oh before i go natasha yeah i love you <gasps> i love you too but i love my brother more